If you are an IT student in grade 12, then this is the video series for you. We are looking at the November 2023 PRAC exam or paper one for IT students or information technology students for grade 12. The video description will have a link where you can download the data files. I would strongly suggest that you download them and first give the paper a try, even if you do question by question, and then see if you can do it. And if you struggle with any parts of it, then you can come back and watch the rest of the video. Also look in the video description for the timestamps for the different questions so you can jump around if you need to. So let's start this series with the question one video and let's get into it. So this is question one, which tends to be some general programming skills. It tends to be very grade 10 and grade 11 level type of work. So some easy marks that we can get there. The more difficult questions will be at the end, but let's see how many of these that we can get. So let's start off with 1.1. The user must do the following. They must enter their name in the edit box and they put their age in the spin edit and we must write code to extract that data and then we must extract the age that's getting the input and then display their name one after each other using an output dialog box. That's an example and that looks like it's a show message and we want to display it like that where we've got the name of the person, the age on a new line. So let's see if we can do that quickly for five marks. So I've already got the data files open. Let's double click on question 1.1's button. So the first step is to get the input. So we've got two variables declared for us. So we're going to put the name in the name variable. So we're going to get that from EDT and I press control spacebar to access all the components that begin with EDT. And I'm assuming we're dealing with the one one edit box. And what property are we using? We're using the text property. Now the text property is a string. S name is a string. So they fit. There's no need to convert anything. Then the age variable. Our age is going to receive the value from the spin edit. SVN controls. And that's from that spin edit over there. And what property of the spin edit? It's going to be the value property, which you can see is an integer. And our age is an integer. So again, there's no need to convert anything. So we can just put it straight into the variable. Now, there's no need to calculate anything. We're simply going to display using a show message. And we are first going to display the name. Then we want a brand new line, which is the hash 13. And then we want to display the age. That's what we display. Now, S name is a string and show message can only work with strings. That that's fine, but our age is a problem because it's an integer. So we need to convert our age from what it is. What is it? An integer to what we want it to become a string. And there we go. I think that's the easiest five marks we can get for a while. So let's go. So if we type in a name here, so like Martin, who's 34 and we display, we get the exact same result as what they're expecting. So there we go. I think that one is done. 1.2 learn so interested in playing hockey are divided into teams of 11 players the total of 11 players represents a full team in hockey the remainder of the players who could not make a full team will be placed on the reserve list a constant variable which is declared as players which has 11 has been provided so we're going to get the exact total number of players from an edit box and we need to calculate how many teams we can field and how many people will be left over so that's basically asking how many times can we get 11 out of 49 so how many groups of 11 are there in 49 and there are four of them and if we take those four groups of 11 out of the 49 what's left over that's the five so that's how we must display it so there's the button for q12 there's the input so let's double click we display in mem q12 so they clear it so we've got this constant so we don't need to work out how many players there are we can rather use the constant using 11 every time so let's first get the input we want to create a variable for the number of learners so i'll just call it learners and make that a type integer so let's do the input first so we're going to say our learners is going to receive the value from edt q12 dot what property the text property now that's a string and this is an integer so we need to convert it from what it is a string to what we want it to become an integer so there's the input done now we need to calculate how many teams we've got and how many reserves so i want to make more variables now both of those will be integers because you can't have 0.3 of a team and you can't have 0.1 of a reserve so we can't have decimals so i made two variables for the teams and the reserve so let's work out the number of teams so the process for the teams is we take the number of learners and we divide it by the number of players which we're just using the constant there the problem with divide 
is that it's going to give me a decimal value. I just want to find out how many times players fits into our learners. I'm not worried about what's left over. So we could, for example, trunk this or we could round it down. But we can just use the div function that works best. It says how many times can players fit into our learners and it just gives that number four. For example, if we had 49, 49 divided by 11, 11 can go into 49 four times. Then the reserves. And you should have worked it out by now how we're going to do the reserves. I should give it the same name. It's going to be the number of learners and what's left over, which is the opposite of div, which is going to be the mod of players. So once we've taken those groups of 11 out of our learners, what's left over? And that'll be the reserves. So 49 basically divided by 11 is going to equal to 4. So we know that there are four groups of 11. So we know that there's going to be 4 times by 11, which is equal to 44 players in a team. Then you can see the difference between those two. So the difference is going to equal to 5. So that's how we get those numbers. And now we must display that value in the memo control. So memq1.lines.add. We first must add the text number. Always remember to use the diagram to help you display what you need to display. Make sure you display it as it is in the diagram. So there's no tab. It's just a space and then the number. So we'll put a space there and then we're going to add, put a new line so you can see it. We're going to play our teams. But our teams is what? It's an integer and lines of add needs a string and that's a string. That's fine. But if we add another string to it, it'll be fine. So we need to convert this from what it is, an integer, to what we want it to become, which is a string. So convert teams to a string, add it onto that text and add it to memo lines. And then watch how I do this so quickly. I'm going to copy this and paste it so that I can just go number of reserves or however they want and the, here we can display the reserves options and I think that's the only two displays that we need so let's go test it you know run it so we got 49 and we get four teams with five reserves if I made it exactly 44 there should be no reserves and if I made it 55 there should be five full teams with no reserves there we go so I think it works 1.3, the value of D must be calculated using that formula. So we've got a square root, we've got an X and a Y to the power of 4. And we are going to assign values to our X and our Y, which looks like they're going to be reals. And then we're going to use this to calculate the value for D and then display that value in the edit box Q13. But we must round it to three decimal places. So take note of that. It must be rounded. So they gave us an example if those are the values for X and Y. So let's go try it. So they've already given me the values for X and Y, so we don't even need to get that input. So we're going to go straight away to a variable called D, which is also going to be a real, which I assume because we're dealing with square roots and square roots return real values. So let's call it RD, so that it's similar to that. So we can say RD is equal to, we first need to take the X minus the Y. That's what we are doing first. So we first can say RX minus RY. And then we need to take that to the power of 4. So I'm going to type in power, open bracket, of that answer to the power of 4. Now if power gets a red line under it, then you know that it hasn't got math at the top. Because that's part of the math library. Now if I go up here, you can see, ah, oh, math's already been added, so I'm fine. But if you go back here, so that's taking that first and then taking it the answer of that to the power of 4 and the answer of that must then be square rooted so all of this must now be square rooted be careful sqrt not sqr because sqr is the square so there we go and then that must be rounded to three decimal places so we're going to use the round two function it needs two parameters. It needs to know how many decimal places. Now remember, decimal places become negative values. So negative three will be to three decimal places. If we wanted to, if we just made it three, it would be to the thousands. So round two, that's what we're going to round two, and then to negative three. And then we can display in the EDT Q13 edit box what property, the text property. And let's look at how they want to display it. They just simply display the number. So we're simply going to say and put RD in there. But remember, this is a string and this is a real. So we must convert this from a real to string so that it can fit in the edit box. But we know that there's no real string function. It is a float to string function. Convert it from a float to a string. Let's go test it out. So it's already got the values. Boom. And there we go. We get the exact same result that they do. Great. So let's move on to 1.4. Participants complete a marathon and finish in the top 20 positions will receive a gold. 
silver or bronze medal based on where they finish. All the participants who finish after the 20th will receive a certificate. So we must write code using an input dialog box for the user to enter the finished position. So where, what's their number? The user is assigned to the variable R position, which I think will be done for us. We just have to write the code that's going to display this. Now they actually say a user's a case statement. So they actually specify that we must use a case statement to display the appropriate message. So let's go and do this. So if it's a one, we're going to say gold. If it's a two or three, we're going to play silver and four. 4220 will be bronze. So we're going to double click on marathon and they've already done the input box, which is going to get the position. So let's say that position one and they want us to use a case statement. Now case statements work with integers. So I can say our position and then over here, we're going to write down what are the options? Well, if it's a one, then we want to display that they are a gold winner. So we can display it in the label, if I recall correctly. Yes, in the label Q14. So LBL Q14. What property of the label? The caption property, not the text. So that's going to equal to, do they say how it must be displayed? So they gave an example there. You received a gold medal or you received a, so I'd say you received. So we can say you received a gold medal. And there we go. You can see that is what's going to happen if our position is a one. Now to save time, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy this and come here and paste it twice. This is how you can save time in exam. So if it's a two or a three, so I put two comma three, then they are going to get a silver medal and four to 20 will be bronze. So we're going to change that to silver. And then over here, we want to go from four to 20. So I'm not going to go four comma five comma six. That's going to take too long. We can say four dot dot 20. And then that will say that they received a bronze. And then if it's neither of those options, we don't know what the last possible position is. So we're going to use an else over here, else. And then I'm going to paste again because I've got that text there and they just take out this part here. Else, they will receive a certificate. I don't know if they specify what that participation certificate. So let's just write that. There we go. And then this end, just remember, this is the end of the case statement. So the case statement, although it doesn't have a begin, will have an end. So there you can see it's attached to that case statement. There we go. I think that's correct. So if we get a one, then we've got gold. If we get a three, it's silver. If we get a 15, we are bronze. If we get a 25, we have participation. Let's try 20 on the dot, still bronze. There we go. I think it's correct. Let's move on to the last part of question one. 1. 1.5, a text file called details contains the names and marks of learners in the following format. There's a name with a hash and then a mark. There's some examples. We must write code that opens up the text file, reads each line, and then determines the average mark of all the learners. Display this mark in the panel rounded to the nearest integer. So it's rounded again. And the code must work correctly for any number of lines of the text file. So we're going to use a while loop for that. Use the position of the hash character to extract the mark so that's the result of what we're looking for so there is the button that we're going to use and there's the panel that we display in the answer so i've actually got the text file over here as well so we can see all the data so that's what each line looks like so let's come here so the moment we see read from a text file i go into zombie mode because you should know your algorithm now for text files so the first thing is we need a text file variable and we need a line for the string that extracts each line. So forget about the code. We're just going to go into zombie mode and make sure that we write the code. Now, they didn't mention anything, did they, about error checking? Don't see anything about error checking. So just in case, I'm going to do the error checking, just in case their marks allocated for it. So that's going to be if file exists. And the text file is called details.txt, which you can see over there. If that is false then we know the text file doesn't exist. And then I'm gonna do two things. I'm first gonna say show message, no file. And then I'm gonna exit. So stop whatever we're doing so that we don't do any of this code over here. It should be a semicolon, Mr. Long. So there we go. There's the code for the error checking. If the file doesn't exist, then we just say, hey, there's no file, and then we exit. Now, if it does exist, then first thing we do is we assign the file, our variable that we've got, we're gonna assign it to the details text file. This creates almost like a link between my variable that I'm going to use in my code and the actual text file. Then we're going to reset the file. Now from this point on, we're not using details.txt, we're just using my file. Reset will open the file for reading and puts the pointer at the first line. So it almost like puts the pointer there. Then we don't know how many lines there are in the text file. So we can use a while loop while not end of file of the text file. And then for each line, we are going to read that line into a string. So we read from my file into a variable called s line, which we declared over here. 
So S line will be one line in the text file. Remember, this must be in a begin end because we're going to be doing a lot of things over here using S line. So that's our text file. And then at the end, we must remember to close the file of the text file. So that's my text file algorithm. That's the recipe that you write every time you are reading from a text file. So over here, basically S line is going to be this. So S line is going to be one line from the text file. So I'm actually going to copy one line. It's going to read that line, put it into S line. So from this point on we can use s line it's going to look like that the first time and the pointer actually moves to the next point so that when we read line again it'll read the next line and so on until it gets to the end so we can just deal with each line individually here and we are trying to work out the average to work out the average of that mark we need to extract the mark we then also need to add that mark onto some sort of sum and then we need to count how many marks there are because the average is the sum of all the marks divided by how many marks there are so the moment we see average we know that we're going to need as you can see those are all integer values so our mark variable to extract the mark we're going to need a sum variable to add all those marks and then we're going to need a count variable which is going to count how many values are in the text file and then we're going to have a array variable which is going to be my variable that stores the average we are going to keep adding onto sum keep adding onto count so we must initialize these at the beginning we don't need to initialize the others because these are the ones that we keep adding onto. This is going to be a once off calculation. That's a once off calculation. So once we've read S line, we know that there is the mark that we want. So our mark means we're going to copy from S line starting wherever the hash is. So we're going to say from the position of the hash in S line. So remember with pause, it's what you're looking for, where you're looking for it. So find the position. So in this case, it's going to be one, two, three. So that hash is at position 15, I think, in that string. So we want to copy, not, actually not from position 15. We want to go from one after 15. We want to start copying from 16. So we're actually going to go plus one. So find the position of the hash, add one onto it. That's where we want to start copying. We're going to copy from that, and we're going to copy, let's say, five characters, because we know whatever's left over will be the mark. It's probably not going to be more than three, but I'll just to be safe, I would do five. So we're going to copy that. Now, the problem with copy is that it returns a string. So it's going to return 87, 87, but the 87 as a string. So we're going to convert that from a string to an int so that it can go into mark. And then once I've got our mark, which will be the 87, I'll say R sum is equal to R sum plus this mark. So add that 87 onto R sum. So then R sum will constantly be added to, which we initialize there. And we're going to increase our count because we found a mark. So now it's a one. Then it's going to go extract the next person and get that 90. And then 90 will be added onto our sum. And we've got two marks now. Noting the reason why we found the position on the hash, because we don't know when the mark starts. With each person, they've got a different length and name. So we don't know where the mark's going to start. That's why we must find the position of the hash and go one after it every time. And that's going to keep doing it in the loop. Loop, 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 loop. And then once it's done, once we are finished the loop, then our rave variable can be whatever the sum is divided by how many learners there were. And that will be the average. And then we're going to display it in the panel rounded to the nearest integer. So we actually need to round this answer. So round it. So I'm actually just going to round it like that. We could have actually made the average a integer value technically because we're rounding it. But let's do that. I'm going to make it an integer. And we are rounding it here. So let's make it I average. So it's not a rave anymore. And then in the panel 15 dot the caption property, we are going to put this variable, but that is an integer. This is a string. So we're going to convert it from an int to a string. Okay, so let's run it. So calculate 59 and that's the same mark that they get. There we go. I think that is correct. We can now move on to question two. Make sure that you save and go check the links to the next video in the video description. It would really help the channel if you click on that subscribe button and remain a subscriber. You can also subscribe to our theory channel at Mr. Long Computer Terms and follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education over there. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.